Now, whether they got torn off in the crash or uh, he tore them off himself, I don't know. I helped him away from the airplane and brought him up towards my brother-in-law's house. And uh, all he had on was his shorts and uh, his skin was... Uh, excuse me. Well, being a paralyzed person myself, I knew that I couldn't do much for them. I was looking and I thought to myself, well, that'll be the, these people that are on that airplane are seeing the last seconds of a normal life that they'll ever live. Aircraft glass is much thicker than what you would see on like a like an automobile windshield. It's uh, several different composite layers that have been temper treated together to make it a very very tough surface. And with each swing in the crash accident, I was only able to chip away a small piece of glass. I need some help. I really did feel kind of alone there. I'm looking around left and right and there's, there's no other fools that close, you know, I, at that second. But even though passenger David McCorkle believes that the plane might blow up at any second, he goes to Matt Bormadam's rescue. Can you help me? I haven't got enough room inside to swing it. Uh, right. Right. In here. Uh, 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 hang on a second here. Hang on, I gotta get some air. The oxygen cylinder in the closet behind the co-pilot's seat punctures. It'll make the cockpit fire much worse. Okay. Uh, go ahead, go ahead. Okay. Uh, stop a second! Let me see if I can squeeze that. Uh, 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 let's get you out of here. Stop pulling me! No, no, it's too small. Go ahead. Uh, uh. By now, the rescue crews of the area have been notified. Firemen, police officers, paramedics, all are hurriedly on their way to the crash site. Will the fire trucks arrive in time to save Matt Warmerdam before the cockpit gets engulfed in flames? David McCorkle is exhausted trying to break the strong glass. Suddenly, a heat flame pops at him from below the cockpit. He backs off, scared for his life. You aren't gonna let me die, are you? He has children, and he must think of them as well. How can he sacrifice his life for a man he does not know? Now more determined than ever, he bangs even harder and faster. Then suddenly, the weakened axe head flies off. It's getting hot in here! Get me out! Guy Pope, a police officer, is the first rescue worker to reach the burning plane. I was about three miles from here when I received the call. And about halfway here, I could see the smoke, pretty heavy smoke. And I got out of the car, and I ran up to the plane. And when I went around the nose of the plane, uh, one of the passengers handed me a hatchet uh, and said that the pilot was inside. And uh, I took the hatchet and uh, started trying to cut a bigger hole. I couldn't get around behind the cockpit because of fire. It was still burning pretty heavy, and there was an oxygen bottle there blowing the fire. And, uh, you know, it, it's just one of them things. You, you, you see a man burn, uh, you, it's, you don't forget it. This is live footage taken with a video from the windshield of a Georgia State Patrol police car as rescue workers are arriving at the site. At this moment, all passengers are out of the two sections of the broken plane, except pilots Ed Ganaway and Matt Warmerdam, who remain prisoners of their cockpit. Well, first off, I had to tear the back of the cockpit out. It had burnt and there was no door, or visible door or anything like that, so I actually took my hands and tore it out. When I started to pull him out, he looked up and he said, tell my wife, Amy, that I love her. I said, no, sir, you tell her that you love her, because I'm getting you out of here. Inside the ambulance, 
I worked with him and I thought that probably he would not make it. I took his name badge and pinned it on his underwear, which was the only thing I'd left on him, trying to cool him down, because I thought that if he died, at least someone would know who he was. Surprisingly, Matt was aware of everything around him, and he kept trying to assure me that things were going to be okay. He was comforting me, because at that particular time, I was crying. Matthew actually took his burned hand and wiped a tear away. They found Captain Ganaway dead in the cockpit. He had struck his head on impact and never regained consciousness. He died of burns and smoke inhalation. The crash survivors, some with broken bones and others with burns ranging from minor to 92%, are rushed to various hospitals in Georgia. 13 passengers were brought to Tanner Hospital in Carrollton, 15 minutes away, where code black was immediately applied, meaning everybody helps. Dr. Bobby Mitchell, after working a night shift, was awakened. He was responsible for treating four survivors, including flight attendant Robin Feck. When I got to the hospital, some of the people uh, that had survived the plane crash were, were already here. The smell was initially just a wave of uh, jet fuel that just hit you as the door opened, and then that was mixed with just a pungent, uh, horrible odor of burned flesh. When a, a patient suffers a severe burn, the skin is violated, and the skin really is the major part of your immune system. So people that have been horribly burned, that, that initial defense is violated, and infection, infectious organisms, organisms harmful to the body can very easily get in, and your immune system can just handle so much. When they are able to survive for a period of weeks, it is not uncommon for them to die from other organ failure, which is what happened to a lot of the people that were on flight 529. I have never before or since dealt with so much uh, physical devastation and emotional upheaval and so much sorrow and horror and sadness in one place at one time than, than we did on that day in this this little small town hospital after a long day treating the horribly burned passengers and witnessing the courage of some of them dr mitchell was asked to assist the autopsy on captain ed ganaway i looked down at him and kind of put my hand over on i told everybody i thought i hope wherever his spirit is that he knows what a good job he did and and i just said you know you're the hero i hope you know it captain ganaway The National Transportation Safety Board in the United States is responsible for investigating air disasters. Its GO team is on duty 24 hours a day to fly to the scene of any major crash. The NTSB will have several subgroups working at the same time, each examining a particular part of the plane. Gordon Jim Hookey, an aerospace engineer, was in charge of the propeller maintenance group. We went out to the crash site, and in the usual fashion, um, you just kind of look around and get a feel for where all the pieces are. We came along the um, propeller assembly that was missing. Looking down through the dirt, we could see the telltale marks, the beach marks, around along the fracture surface that indicated it might have been a fatigue fracture. During the last 10 minutes of Flight 529, no one on board the plane suspected that the engine failure had been caused by a propeller blade fracture. Hookie had good reason to be concerned by the broken propeller blade. He'd seen it all before. Four years earlier, another ASA Brasilia had nosedived and crashed in woods in Georgia, killing all 23 people aboard, including former U.S. Senator John Tower of Texas and space shuttle astronaut Manly Sonny Carter. The NTSB's investigation of that incident had found the crash had been caused by a badly designed propeller control unit, and they blamed the manufacturer, Hamilton Standard. Then in March 1994, just 17 months before ASA 529, on two separate commercial flights, identical propeller...